Hey guys, welcome to a video on Monopoly versus Perfect Competition. I'm going into this video assuming you've already watched my Monopoly video, or at least that you have some understanding of how a monopolist chooses its quantity and price. But just as a quick refresher, a monopoly chooses the quantity where the marginal revenue equals the marginal cost. And at that quantity, they choose the highest price possible, which is on the demand curve at that quantity. Now we want to compare this outcome to the quantity and price that the monopolist would choose if it acted like a competitive firm. So let's get a supply and demand graph up here. Quick reminder, the supply curve is the marginal cost curve in perfect competition. So that means that if we look at a monopoly and you see this cost curve for the only firm in the market, that would be analogous to a competitive supply curve. And so this picture over here is really a picture of the monopoly, but minus the marginal revenue curve. And then we see this equilibrium where the price is set equal to the marginal cost at the equilibrium quantity. Well, where does that line up on the monopolist graph? It's here. The monopolist quantity is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. The competitive quantity would be when price equals marginal cost. And because of that, we can draw a few conclusions. The monopolist quantity will be less than the competitive quantity. The monopolist price will be more than the competitive price. The monopolist profit will be more than the competitive profit. And these lessons will always be true as long as the demand curve isn't flat. If it's flat, they'll all be the same. All right, let's take a quick look at consumer and producer surplus in all this. Consumer surplus in perfect competition, everything below the price above, sorry, below the demand curve above the price. It's excess willingness to pay. In monopoly, it's the same idea, below the demand curve above the price, but the price is higher. And so it's only that smaller area. Under perfect competition, producer surplus, everything below price above marginal cost is all of this. Under monopolist, it's everything below price above marginal cost up to the quantity sold, which is this. So the picture is kind of reminiscent of like a price floor or a quota or something. The way some of the consumer's surplus has been redistributed to the producer. And there's also that empty space where no surplus happens. So let's put a couple more of our generalizations on here. Back looking at this picture. Consumers lose under monopoly, and the firm wins. Consumer surplus is less as a monopoly than under competition. And producer surplus is more with monopoly than with competition. Now, going back to the colored picture, let's look at that empty space. Remember, the demand curve represents willingness to pay. The cost curve represents willingness to sell. And any time there are transactions where someone is willing to pay more than the cost of production, we want to see that transaction happen. That would be efficient. Since none of those transactions happen, no surplus is generated. We call this a deadweight loss. A monopolist, by lowering the quantity and raising the price, creates inefficiency and deadweight loss. And that is why this is one form of a market failure. Market failure being the market leads to an inefficient outcome. It's not a competitive market. It's not efficient because the one firm can take from the consumers in a way that benefits the firm, but does more harm than good to the overall market. A couple of quick plugs. Deadway loss might be less if the monopolist can do some fancy pricing stuff. Uh, later on, we might talk about price discrimination or two-part tariffs or block pricing or all kinds of other pricing schemes. Those are schemes where the monopolist can sell more units of the good and by selling different prices still manage to extract even more money from consumers. So those usually end with the monopolist getting tons of profit, but with more transactions. So the market becomes more efficient. Uh, there also will be less deadweight loss if there's a lot of substitute products in related markets. Uh, substitutes would make the demand curve more elastic, which would mean that they, the monopolist couldn't mark the price up as much. The deadweight loss would become less because of it. Uh, deadweight loss would be less if there were lower barriers to entry because there would be threat 
of firms entering the market and some competitive pressure. So those are some things where we could see a monopoly market becoming a little more efficient or maybe even all the way efficient in some extreme cases. But that's all for now. Uh, this is all I needed to do. So thank you guys for watching. I hope it was helpful. If not, too bad. But thanks for watching. See y'all later and happy econing.